Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu salamu ala rasulillah Sayyidina wa maulana Muhammad ibn Abdullah Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawalahum bi isani la mindin wa baad assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh my distinguished brothers and sisters in Islam May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us aright We are happy to see you once again watching and listening to us may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be our guide Today inshallah we want to discuss about another important matter in Islam which is unity the union of the muslims Muslims must be united not because their aqida and their understanding are the same but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes that they are the same they have no is they are they are not splitting or they are not segregating there is no disunity among them the scholars say that apart from unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala worshiping Allah alone without ascribing any partner to him there is nothing Allah stress in the glorious Quran than unity of the Muslims these verses are known to Muslims these verses are known to everybody who has something or some insight into the knowledge of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants Muslims to be united. But we should also remember that unity which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about is not or does not mean conformity. That is the unity of Muslims does not mean conformity and nobody should take it as a conformity. There is no way my understanding and your understanding will be the same. It's impossible because our educational achievements are not the same. The capacity of our brain and minds are not the same. The type the books I have written is not the ones you have read. You have read more than me. You have covered more than me. Then your understanding should be different from mine. And so many factors like this that will contribute to that. But what we are saying and what Islam is saying is that unity does not mean conformity. This could be shown eh, or could be seen eh, in the authentic ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu and some companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This popular hadith when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after the battle of Khandak sent some com companions in the hadith of Al-Bukhari that la yusallina ahadukum al-asra illa fi bani Quraiza none of you should perform asr unless in the Banu Quraiza when you reach there you perform salat al-asr as they were going the period of asr was due to be performed then the companions divided into two when they divided into two one part of them was was saying that let us perform salat al asr because it is time for it another one said no the prophet said we shouldn't perform salat al asr until we reach the people of ban of uh, we, reach, we reach the place of banu quraiza and they divided the party that believed to perform salat al asr performed ablution and they started performing their salah the one that I believe that what they understood from the statement of the Prophet is that they shouldn't perform Salat al-Asr until they reached the place of Banu Koreza, waited for them, they didn't perform Salah. When they, when, when, when they are finished, immediately they reached the place of Banu Koreza, the other party performed Salat al-Asr and the other one that have performed were watching, just waiting for them. This is the manifestation of unity we are talking about. Unity does not mean conformity. What, do, what, does, what does this mean? When they were coming on the road, the party that believed to perform Salat al-Asr was performing it. And the one that did not believe was watching. In fact, any outsider or a passerby will even think that these ones that didn't perform salat were watching over these ones or they were their security he would not an outsider would never know that they, they there was a disunity among them regarding that issue you can see they didn't do what their brothers believed to doing 
but they waited for them. That is, unity does not mean conformity. They waited for them, they didn't go. And when they, when they reached the place of Banu Kureza, the party that has not prayed also performed prayed, and the one that had prayed waited for them. And nobody, in fact, anybody that was not among them wouldn't know what was happening among, among them. There is what we lack today. And we must correct this by all means, my brothers and my sisters. We must correct this. Just by the fact that you are, you are differing with someone does not mean that the person has become your enemy or the person has become your, your antagonizing the person. No. Your understandings are different. But make sure that uh, they still see you as one. Anyone who is not from among you shouldn't know that this is what is happening. And that is what we lack today. We must think about this, my brothers and my sisters. Think about it. Think, think about it, please. In another authentic ideas, again, which mention this issue of uh, unity and does not mean conformity, is a popular hadith too, in which the Prophet ﷺ sent Sayyidina Umar and Ammar ibn Yasir for a mission. As they were going on the way, they missed water, they got no access to water again. Then it was time for Salah. And you know the next alternative, if the water is missing, is dry ablution, tayemum. Both, both of them performed a tayemum and they said their prayers. When they have finished their prayers, they continue with their journey. As they were going, they got access to water again. When they got access to water, Amar suggested that since we have got access to water again, let's perform ablution and set the prayers again. Umar said no. I have performed the salat which Allah made obligatory on me. Then Amal said, no, I will perform ablution with water and then I will recite my prayers. And Umar said, here is you. I'm waiting for you. Umar did not join him in the salah, but Umar did not go away. Umar waited for him, despite the fact that he didn't believe with what Amal was doing. He waited. Everybody knows said now Umar that he's a non-nonsense man. He can do whatsoever you think of harshness. But when it comes to this, you see, he didn't say anything. Isn't it? He waited. And after Ahmad, as uh, what you call it, had done according to his understanding, then they started moving. So when they arrived, they narrated this to the Prophet and the Prophet said that uh, uh, Umar, Umar, was, Umar did according to Sunnah, but uh, Ammar also had two rewards, the first reward of first Salat and the second reward of the second Salat. Isn't it? So the Prophet, the Prophet did not blame any of them because each one of them did it according to his understanding. So since he did it according to his understanding, there is no any blame on, me on that. That is why we should learn something eh, on this. It's very important for us as Muslims. In another authentic hadith transmitted by Imam al-Bukhari, Abdullah ibn Masud, you know, he was a great companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Masud was told one day during, a, what, what, during pilgrimage, Hajj, that Sayyidina Osman, when he became Khalifa, after two years of his Khalifa, he started praying for four rakas in Mina. In the second sitting of Mina, he started performing four four rakas. Instead of two two that were performed by the Prophet Sallallahu Abu Bakr and Umar, Osman started completing it for. And Ibn Masud, uh, being a great companion of the Prophet ﷺ was consulted by some people that this is what Usman is doing. Why don't we be contrary to him? Let's take a contrary view. Let's go with that of the Prophet Umar Abu Bakr. And Ibn Masud told him that no, let's follow Usman. Al Khilafu Sharrun. And this unity is bad, is a sure, is an evil thing. Don't do it. Let's follow it. So he united with Uthman ibn Affan, 
and remaining companions, despite the fact that what he was doing did not go down to him. He didn't believe doing it. He didn't believe that such things should be done. But when he was asked that he should, which they should do contrary, he said, no, it's not good at all. It's not good. So when, you, when we say unity, Islam is not saying that you should do according to your brother or you should do exactly what your brother is doing. No. But let you be seen as one, just as Ibn Masood did, Umar, and other people we have narrated, doing, and even the ones that we cannot narrate. So please take note of this. Another uh, hadith uh, is the issue of Sayyidina Ali. When Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him, he burnt uh, Abdullah ibn, uh, Abdullah ibn Sabai, uh, Ali Yemeni, Ali Yehudi, Al Shi'i, Al Khabith. When he burnt him because he said that Ali was Allah. Uh, and some people who believed that with him. Ali warned them several times that they should they should sit from that session, but they didn't. So one day Ali ibn Abi Talib asked that a fire should be flamed. Uh, and then he burnt them. As Ali said him, said that for long Mara I to Amra Munakiran had just to Naran Wada out to Kambaran. When I see that the situation is so bad to that extent that and uh, they say that uh, I, I I am the Allah, I am the Lord now. Then I just to Naran with the outer Kambaran. I called my servant called Kambar. I called him to gather flame, what do you call it, firewood, and put flame on it. And when he started burning, he burnt them all. When Ibn Abbas heard about this, Ibn Abbas said that my brother uh, committed a mistake. And last one, and the Prophet said that uh, no one should punish with what Allah SWT used to punish. But with all these mistakes that Ali ibn Abi Talib committed, uh, when contrary to the assertion of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi Ibn Abbas did not go against him. He didn't disunite from him. We should take note of this. Then this, this the unity we are talking about, the unity we are discussing, uh, is not even is not restricted to the Muslims alone. Even to the non-Muslims, for the sake of peace, one can unite with them. As long as they are not tyrants, those non-Muslims are not tyrants that are antagonizing Muslims or persecuting, persecuting Muslims. You, you, you could believe me that when the Prophet Sallallahu arrived to Medina, when he migrated to Medina, he met Jews, he met some little Christians, he met some other people in the Medina, and he sat down with them. And they drafted what is later known in the history of Islam as the Dustur al Medina, the Constitution of Medina, or the Peace Treaty of Medina, or Chartered of Medina, as some people may call it. The Prophet Sallallahu sat with Jews of Banu Kainoka, Banu Koreza, Banu Nadir, and others, and they were not Muslims. He sat with minority Christians there too, and the remaining pagans in the Medina by then. He sat with them. What is the essence of this sitting? So that they draft them a, 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 a document that will guide them, that will let peace to reign. Unity among everybody is very important. Even if they are not Muslims, you must get their, their, their minds so that meaningful things or meaningful achievement will be gotten and out of our society. So unity is not about doing what other person is doing. No. Unity is about seeing us as one unless you remain as one united Ummah. Not doing what your brother is doing. Your understandings are not the same. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our mistakes. And may Allah the Almighty put our things aright. May Allah protect us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our country. May Allah protect Muslims and elevate Muslims from all form of uh, persecutions and calamities that we are facing today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be our guide. We thank you very much for watching. Till we meet another time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.